Okay, we have a mass and pulley system here. Uh, lots going on, so uh, let's make sure that we keep ourselves organized. And we're asked how many times larger the large mass here, this big M, is than the little m. In other words, uh, we do have friction involved, we can see, and therefore uh, this may or may not move, but uh, if the big M is large enough, there is a point where it will start to accelerate. And that's the point we're interested in here. So let's start off, uh, identify forces involved. We can see we're gonna have the force of gravity here. And we'll put a little M just to indicate that that force of gravity is different than this force of gravity, which we'll put big M. All right, and we're sliding down the ramp, so probably useful to set out a little axis there and break this into components right away. So this would be FG capital MY and FG capital MX. And um, we have a normal force from the ramp. And that's opposing that FG capital MY. And uh, let's not forget about our friction force. And if we are just about to accelerate down the ramp, then we know that our friction force will be opposing that motion. So it'll be pointed up the ramp. And uh, we could stop and say, if this is 30 degrees, which we're told, uh, this being 90, that makes this 60, that makes this back to 30 degrees there. So uh, that'll be useful when we get to our equations, I suppose. Now, when we're doing a problem like this, um, we quite often find it handy, um, make our lives easier easier by making a bit of a modified free body diagram. Um, and that means that if we shift everything so it looks as though it's just going left or right, uh, it helps us in our equations just keeping things straight. Um, and so if little m is here and big M is here, then pulling to the left, we would have Fg little m. Pulling to the right, we'd have Fg big M x. And then we would have the normal force like that and the FG big M Y there. And let's not forget about our friction force. So a little bit of a modified free body diagram, but yeah, definitely makes life easier for us. So let's jump into some equations and um, staying as organized as we can, uh, starting off with our tried and true F net equals MA. Now, what are the net forces here? Um, let's refer to our modified free body diagram and pulling to the right, we have FG capital MX. And that's the only thing pulling right. Uh, pulling left, we have our force of friction and we also have our mg little m. And that gives us our mass times our acceleration. And we have to remember, we're talking about the entire system. So the entire system and the acceleration there. And we can stop here and just say, well, you know what? The acceleration, it's just beginning to accelerate. So it's just leaving zero. And so at this point, it is still zero. And so that wipes out that whole term on the right-hand side. All right, so um, let's uh, flesh this out a little bit. Um, we can say that our first term is uh, capital MG. And then for the X component of it, we can put sine 30. And then uh, the force of friction, um, well, let's keep little steps. So for now, we'll just say mu Fn. Um, and then our Fgm, um, and that's the little one, so it's just Mg. And that's all equal to zero. All right. So uh, breaking down that normal force a little bit more, let's this stay the same. 
and we have mu and the normal force, if we look at our free body diagram, the normal force is simply opposing that uh, FGMY. And so we can replace that with the Y is cos 30. All right. And we could shift that MG over to the right hand side. And there we go. Now, our goal here, remember, is to figure out the ratio of uh, how much bigger the capital M or the large M is than the small M. So we're going to want to uh, focus on the M's here. So why don't we try and factor out that M on that left hand side. And actually, when I'm looking at it, I see that we have a G in every term here. So we could cross out the G's, which we can stop and say, OK, if this whole setup was on the moon, it would do the exact same thing. It doesn't matter um, what that uh, G is in, a, in our equation here. So nevertheless, factoring out that capital M and we have sine 30 minus mu cos 30. And on the right hand side, we just have M. Now, again, we're looking for the ratio of M's. So uh, what looks like a way to solve that to me is if we divide both sides by little m, then we will get that ratio of masses. Um, in other words, how many times bigger is that big m than the little m? Well, it's just the division of them. And so we divided both sides by little m, and we'll also divide both sides by this um, the whole mess in the brackets here. And so when we divide by little m, we're left with a 1. And so on the bottom, sine 30 minus mu cos 30. And our mu in this case, we look up there, it's our static coefficient, 0.45. So we are ready to stick that all into our calculator at this point. Um, and so one over all of that, and remember, use your brackets so that when you're dividing, you're dividing by the whole thing. And um, with that, in our calculator, we come up with nine point, and rounding a little bit, um, two six figs looks appropriate. And so 9.1. So what does this tell us? So M is 9.1 times bigger than little m. And so, or the ratio of them is 9.1, or however you want to answer that, as long as you're clear on what you've answered here, then all is good. But um, yeah, again, looking back, um, big part of this one is just to simplify it in little steps and stay as organized as you can.